It is September 20th, 2016. This is the Watchman News, and I'm Mike Callahan. Um, you might want to grab yourself a, a coffee or your favorite drink um, and sit down. This report's going to take a little bit. This is also probably, um, since I've been doing this, one of the most serious reports uh, that I've ever done. Moments are going to kind of feel like maybe this report is bipolar, but uh, I think in the end we can kind of see through all of it. This has to do with Syria, and we will start out with a report from AMN. I will have the link to everything I cover. There will be a link in the About tab, in the description tab of the video. So this is the first, first link I have. Russian Defense Ministry releases footage of attacked UN aid convoy in Syria's Aleppo. The Russian military unveiled on Tuesday video footage of a UN humanitarian aid convoy that came under attack in Syria which shows militants pick up vehicle carrying a large caliber mortar as part of the convoy. The video shows that the UN aid convoy was accompanied by a terrorist off-road vehicle with a large caliber mortar launcher, the Russian Defense Ministry spokesman said. The examination of the video footage made via drones of the movement of the humanitarian convoy in areas controlled by militants in the province of Aleppo has revealed new details. The video clearly shows how terrorists are redeploying a pickup with a large caliber mortar on it using the convoy as cover. Uh, this was said by Major General Igor uh, Konoshkinkov. I know I got that wrong. Um, he said that it is unclear yet who accompanies whom. The pickup with a mortar accompanies the convoy with the white helmets, volunteers, or vice versa. Most importantly, where did the mortar disappear near the destination point of the convoy and what was the target of its fire during the convoy's stop and unloading? On Monday, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said that the aid convoy crossed the conflict line with the big Olam area of Syrian city of Aleppo. Later, UN officials stated that the convoy had been shelled and there were casualties. Earlier, the Russian Defense Ministry said that neither Russian nor Syria aircraft carried out strikes against UN aid convoy, emphasizing the examination of video footage reveals no signs of an ammunition strikes on the convoy and it seems to be set on fire. The ministry emphasized that the uh, perpetrator of the fire, as well as his goal, may be known by members of the White Helmets organization that allegedly has connection to al Nusra front terrorists who have accidentally been at the right time and in the right place with cameras. According to the official, al Nusra front terrorist group carried out an artillery attack on the southwestern suburb of Aleppo using multiple launch rocket systems. Okay, next up I believe I have what is going to be the video of that. Let me bring this up full screen here. This was uh, taken, if I'm not mistaken, by a Russian drone, this video. Alrighty. Alrighty, next up what I have for you is from Reuters. The next two uh, articles I have from you are for you is from Reuters. UN rose back from describing Syria convoy attack as airstrikes. 
by the way the, the way this is working is you know every time it seems like we take a step towards finding out what really happened it seems like the u.s steps back just enough uh and then turns around and, and reaccuses. the united nations wrote back on tuesday from describing an attack on the aid convoy in syria as airstrikes saying it did not have conclusive evidence about what had happened the incident in which 18 trucks from a 31 vehicle convoy were destroyed on Monday evening had looked likely to deal a death blow to the weak old ceasefire. It drew vigorous denunciations from the, uh, around the world. The UN, Red Cross, and the United States had all described it as an airstrike imp uh, implicitly pinning on the blame on Russian or Syrian aircraft in, that fly in the area for breaking a ceasefire with a strike on a humanitarian target. Now remember, let's not forget, the U.S. has already apologized, okay? The U.S. has already po apologized, and then if I, I guess they've recanted <laughs> the whole, I mean, it's, it's really, it's crazy, but let's, let's get through this. But Russia, which denied its aircraft, or those of its Syrian government allies were involved, said on Tuesday it believed the convoy was not struck from the air at all, but had caught fire because of some incident on the ground. That's what you've seen in the video just a, just a moment ago. The Syrian Red Crescent said the head of one of its local offices and around 20 civilians had been killed, although other death tolls differed. After the Russian explanation, the UN put out a revised version of an earlier statement removing warning on airstrikes and replacing its references to unspecified attacks. UN humanitarian spokesman Jens Lark said that the references to airstrikes in the original statement attributed to the top UN humanitarian officials in the region and in Syria were probably the result of a drafting error. We are not in a position to determine whether these were in fact airstrikes. We are in a position to say that the convoy was attacked, he said. Washington still said it still believed the attacks were a result of an airstrike which could only have been carried out by Russia or the Syrian military. For a convoy to be targeted in an airstrike is truly outrageous. Again, we don't know exactly what happened. We're working through it. But we think it was an airstrike, said Brett McGurk, the U.S. presidential envoy to coalition fighting against the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq. The attack on Monday evening prompted the U.N. to suspend all aid shipments into Syria and brought the latest peace efforts to the brink of collapse. Secretary of State John Kerry, who personally negotiated the ceasefire during months of diplomacy in the face of skepticism from the senior U.S. officials, met 20 other foreign ministers, including Russia's Sergei Lavrov. The ceasefire is not dead, Kerry said. The ceasefire was meant to halt all fighting and allow aid to reach besieged areas at a time when pro-government forces with Russian and Iranian military support are in their strongest positions for years and civilians in many rebel-held areas are cut off from food and medical supplies. If this callous attack is found to be a deliberate targeting of humanitarians, it would amount to a war crime, UN aid chief Stephen O'Brien said in a statement. Peter Moore, president of the International Committee of the Red Cross, called it a flagrant violation of international humanitarian law. At a briefing on Tuesday morning, Benoit Carpenter, uh, Carpentier, something like that, sorry, a spokesman for the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies described the incident as airstrikes. He was not immediately available to respond to questions about whether the Red Cross stood by that characterization, characterization of Russia gave its ex explanation. Igor Konashikov, I'm sorry, I'm going to I'm going to butcher all these names, so a spokesman for Russia Defense Ministry said in a statement, we have studied video footage from the scene from so-called activists in detail and did not find any evidence that the convoy had been struck by ordnance. 
There are no craters, and the exterior of the vehicles do not have any kind of damage consistent with blasts caused by bombs dropped from the air. He said the damage to the gun was visible in footage was caused by its cargo catching on fire. It had occurred at the same time as militants from the group formerly called the Nusra Front had started a big offensive in nearby Aleppo, he said, appearing to point the finger at rescue workers from a group called the White Helmets who filmed the aftermath. Only representatives of the White Helmets organization close to the Nusra Front who, as always, found themselves at the right time in the right place by chance with their video cameras can answer who did this and why. Hussein Badawi, head of the White Helmets in the town, said that he was 100 meters from the aid de depot when the airstrikes took place and was injured by shrapnel in the hand. There were fires, martyrs, wounded people. We were able to pull out four survivors and five dead bodies at first, Badawi said. The bombardment, bombardment sorry, was continuous, continuous. The rescue teams weren't even able to work. Those who arrived in ambulances couldn't come in. The ceasefire deal was a gamble on unprecedented cooperation between the United States and Russia, despite trust between the two Cold War era foes being its lowest point for decades. They support opposite sides in the war between Assad's government and insurgents but are both fighting against Islamic State militants. The deal calls for Washington and Moscow to share targeting information eventually the first time they would have had to fought openly together since World War II. Following the attack, a senior Obama administration official said of the ceasefire, we don't know if it can be salvaged. At this point, the Russians have to demonstrate very quickly their seriousness of purpose because otherwise there will be nothing to extend and nothing to salvage, the official who spoke to reporters on condition of anonymity added. Following Monday's attack, there were reports of intensified clashes across Syria. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a Britain-based monitor of the war, said clashes took place between the army and rebels in the Jobar district of Damascus and areas northeast of the capital after the army tried to advance. Near the central city of Homs, uh, the army shelled one village while helicopters and warplanes bombed several other places, including the rebel-held town of Rastan, it said. Okay, now this is all from this Reuters report. All right, and then there's another Reuters report right here. Again, you know, this is, this is going to get almost bipolar here in a moment with uh, the most important one, or at least I feel the most important uh, report will be at the end, not because I'm trying to make you hang in there for all of this, but I'm trying to do this in some kind of type of timeline fashion. U.S. believes Russian aircraft hit Syria aid convoys officials. By the way, this was released at, uh, today at 6.23 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, okay? This probably makes a difference, too. Now, this here was released today. The, the one I just read to you was released at 4.40 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, okay? This uh, YouTube video, I show it uploaded September 20th, which is today, but I don't have a time on it for you. This here story, uh, I'm showing as coming out today as well, but I do not see a time. So, okay, let's continue. U.S. believes Russian aircraft hit Syria aid convoy officials. The United States believes two Russian aircraft attacked an aid convoy near Aleppo in a strike that shattered a one-week truce, U.S. US officials said on Tuesday, but Russia denied involvement. Now remember, folks, let's, let's not forget that in the beginning of this, the U.S. had already apologized for the coalition being involved. Britain has also apologized. Britain is also doing an investigation, an internal investigation as to what happened, okay? Let's not forget these things. Despite the military blame game over Monday's deadly attack, diplomats struggled to save the U.S.-Russian ceasefire agreement that took effect on September 12th. 
The incident, in which 18 trucks from a 31 vehicle convoy were destroyed, looked likely to deal a blo death blow to diplomatic efforts to halt a civil war now in its sixth year. Two Russian Sukhoi Su-24 warplanes were in the skies above the aid convoy at the exact time it was struck late on Monday. Two U.S. officials told Reuters, citing U.S. intelligence that led them to conclude Russia was to blame. Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman denied the assertion, or the assertion, sorry, telling reporters at the United Nations the U.S. administration has no facts to support the claim, adding, we have nothing to do with the situation. Earlier, Russia, which denied its aircraft or those of its Syrian government allies were involved, had said it believed the convoy was not struck from the air at all, but had caught fire because of some incident on the ground. The Syrian Red Crescent said the heads of one of its local officers, uh, offices and around 20 civilians had been killed, although other death tolls differed. The attack prompted the United Nations to suspend all aid shipments to Syria. Senior officials from 23 nations emerged from a one-hour meeting on Syria at a New York luxury hotel with little more than an agreement to meet again on Friday about how to end a conflict that has killed hundreds of thousands and driven millions from their homes. They also differed on the chances of renewing the ceasefire. The ceasefire is not dead, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said after the meeting, which he hosted with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Is there still a chance this ceasefire will be effective? I can't an answer that question, French Foreign Minister Jean-Marc Ayoual, I know I got that wrong too, told reporters. He said that without a ceasefire, there will be a spiral of war, but we have to be honest. The U.S.-Russian negotiation has reached its limits. The U.N. Security Council is due to hold a high-level meeting on Syria on Wednesday. The United Nations, Red Cross, and the United States had all described Monday's incident as an airstrike, implicit depending on the blame on Russia or Syrian aircraft that fly in the area for breaking the ceasefire with an attack on a humanitarian target. But the UN revised a statement to remove the phrase airstrikes and replace it with references to unspecified attacks. UN humanitarian spokesman Jens Lorik, and again I'm not going to get these right, said the original reference to airstrikes was probably a drafting error saying that the UN was not in a position to determine if there was airstrikes but it's sure the convoy was attacked. The ceasefire was meant to halt all fighting and allow aid to reach besieged areas at a time when pro-government government forces with Russian and Iranian military support are in their strongest position for years and civilians in many rebel-held areas are cut off from food and medical supplies. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the same report. Yep. Yeah. Okay, the rest of this is the same report that I had read to you just a moment ago. Now, we're going to move on to, uh, to a report from The Hill. Its headline is, U.S. official wasn't there to answer Russian call on Syria strike. Now, listen to this, right? Okay, they're blaming, and this, is, this is where it gets bipolar, folks. This is where it gets bipolar. You, ha you have two totally different situations going on about the same situation. It's insane. Listen to this, Okay. U.S. official wasn't there to answer Russian call on Syria strike. Okay, check this out. This is this is this is insane. We're 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 trying to say that it's Russian or Syrian aircraft that that's doing this, right? But but watch this. When a Russian military officer tried to notify the U.S. this weekend that its coalition was hitting Syrian forces, the American point of contact was not available immediately a U.S. military spokesman said Tuesday. There was a call from the Russians that was, I think, a little bit cryptic. We weren't exactly sure what they were saying. We did start to look into it, said Air Force Colonel J.T. Thomas, the coalition spokesman for the war against Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. They called back and they got more specific that said, hey, 
you're hitting regime forces and at a point it was about minutes less than five minutes that the u.s call to knock it off had been put into place and the attack ceased thomas said the first call from the russians was the point of contact in u.s uh, combined air operations center so a coordinating coalition airstrikes in syria but that person was not available at the time thomas said they asked to speak to their contact and that individual wasn't next to the phone he said they weren't expecting a call so there's a designated person in the caoc to take those calls each day and they had to go and fetch the the person on our side to get it he said after the Russians called back, the message became more specific when they got to speak to that person. They were not just literally sitting by the phone at the moment, Thomas said. The revelation shed some light on the struggle for clear communication between the U.S.-led coalition and Russian forces who are both conducting air wars in Syria. The U.S. and Russia suspended their military relationship but have opened a channel to make sure their air forces don't collide over Syria. However, that communication was tested after U.S. and coalition air aircraft struck what Russia and Syria claim was a Syrian military site, killing 62 and wounding about 100 more. The U.S. said it was appointing a one-star general to investigate the incident. So... Now, wait a minute. Whose planes was it? We have the U.S. It's just, this, this, just, just, they're, they're trying to make it seem like it's something different. They're, they're trying to, to give us a fake here, is what they're, exactly what they're doing. Not Russia. Not Russia, mind you. Russia's sticking to their, to their story. Hi, right, this is out of BBC. Syria conflict. Helicopter dropped bombs on aid convoy. The UN has suspended aid deliveries in Syria after an attack on a humanitarian convoy killed about 20 people. Media act activist Zachariah Junaid told BBC Arabic's Nader Ibrahim a helicopter dropped barrel bombs on the convoy while it was being unloaded at a Syrian Arab Red Crescent Warehouse in the rebel-held town of Uram al Kubra. A later attack by jets prevented rescue workers from the Syria's civil defense, known as the White Helmets, from helping victims at the scene, he added. The Syrian government and its ally Russia have said their aircraft were not involved. Now remember, we've already even apologized for this. Okay, we just read a story in the Hill about how Russia had an issue getting a hold of their contact person to be able to stop the shelling. Okay, again, there, I, I, this is this is insane. This is uh, the most bipolar story I've ever told. So I told you the most important thing was in the end, and it is. This is what I would say is probably going to be. Uh, the closest without an all full out declaration of war. This comes from my Daily Informer. Warning Russia issues new quote unquote rules of engagement in Syria. Any aircraft threatening the Syrian army will be shot down. US, Turkey, and Israel in the crosshairs. After the United States and quote-unquote coalition aircraft attacked Syrian army positions quote-unquote by mistake, which killed 62 and injured over 100 Syrian soldiers, Russia says the next mistake will be the pilot's last as new rules of, engage of engagement are now in effect. Two days ago, on 17th September, U.S.-led coalition jets bombed Syrian government forces positions near the eastern city of Deir Ezzor, killing 62 troops and paving the way for Islamic State militants, the Syrian Army General Command told the state television. The bombing took place on Al Tharda Mountain in the region of Deir Ezzor and caused casualties and destruction on the ground. Syria's official SANA news agency reported on Saturday. 
62 Syrian soldiers were killed and over 100 injured in the airstrike by the U.S.-led coalition. Russia Defense Ministry spokesman Major General Igor Konashikov said citing information received from the Syrian General Command. The Russian Defense Ministry said that the aircraft which carried out the bombings had entered Syrian airspace from the territory of Iraq. Four strikes against Syrian positions was performed by two F-16 jet fighters and two A-10 support aircraft, it added. If the airstrike was caused by the wrong coordinates of targets, then it's direct consequence of the stubborn unwillingness of the American side to coordinate with Russia in its actions against terrorist groups in Syria, Koneshikov stressed. The Defense Ministry also confirmed a report by SANA that an Islamic State offensive began right out of Syrian army positions were hit from the air. Immediately after the airstrike by coalition planes, Islamic State militants launched their offensive fierce fighting with the terrorists and currently underway uh, in the area of the airport where for a long time humanitarian aid for civilians was parachuted. The timing of the ISIS attack coming within seven minutes of the U.S. airstrikes against the Syrian army has led some to conclude that the U.S. is providing air cover for ISIS terrorists. The Syrian General Command called the bombing a serious and blatant aggression against Syrian forces and said it was conclusive ev evidence that the U.S. and its allies support IS militants. According to a news release, of the Department of the Defense, the coalition's aviation performed combat missions in Deir Azor on Saturday. We are aware of the reports and checking with the CENTCOM and CJTF, the Pentagon told RT. The U.S. Central Command later has issued a statement saying it had no intention of targeting Syrian governmental forces near Deir Azor. Syria is a complex situation with various military forces and militias in close proximity, but the coalition would not intentionally strike a known Syrian military unit, the statement read. CENTCOM promised that the strike and circumstances surrounding it will be reviewed to see if the lesson can be learned. An unmanned U.S. military official told Reuters that he's pretty sure that the targets hit in U.S.-led coalition airstrike on Saturday had been Syrian forces. According to the official, the bombings in Deir Azor were carried out using U.S. intelligence which was being gathered for days. The U.S. says its attack stopped as soon as Russia notified the American side that they had been hitting the Syrian military, he added, but does, that does not fit the facts. According to both Russian and Syrian army reports, the American jets were repeatedly told that they were attacking the wrong side but continued attacking until aircraft were painted by Russian S-300 aircraft missile systems, anti-aircraft missile systems. It was only after the surface-to-air missile locked onto the aircraft that they cut off the attack. After the attack, the U.S. told Russia and Syria they would investigate how this quote-unquote mistake happened and report back. No report was forthcoming. So both Russia and Syria requested and were granted an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council for the purpose of the U.S. explaining why it attacked the Syrian army. The meeting was convened over the weekend, but rather than provide an explanation, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Samantha Powers, got up and walked out of the meeting. No explanation came from the U.S. After this failure to explain itself, the Russians and Syrians were left to conclude that the U.S. attack was deliberate. Moscow cited the strikes, which allowed Islamic State fighters to briefly overrun a Syrian army position near Deir Azor airport, as evidence that the United States was helping the jihadist militants. We are reaching a really terrifying conclusion for the whole world that the White House is defending Islamic State. Now there can be no doubts about that. The Ria Novisti news agency quoted Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova as saying, 
If the U.S. and its coalition are, in fact, covering for ISIS, then the end for that is near. Russia issued new rules of engagement today, instructing its air force and surface-to-air missile batteries that they are to shoot down any aircraft threatening Syrian army forces. So the next mistake by a U.S. pilot will very likely be the last mistake that pilot makes. Once the S-300 anti-aircraft system missile system locks onto the aircraft, there is no escape and no defense. The system cannot be jammed and its missiles cannot be fooled by flares or chaff. An S-300 absolutely, positively will hit and kill any aircraft it's fired at. This is also bad news for Turkey, which also has troops and planes operating inside Syria without permission. If a Turk aircraft attacks a Syrian army unit, it, too, will be shot down. And let me remind you folks that Syria did not ask us to be there. Syria does not want us to be there. We have no permission to be in Syria. Neither does Turkey. Israel is also in trouble with these news, rule, news rules of engagement. Well, Israel has been sending the Israeli Air Force to strike areas of the occupied Golan Heights, official Syrian territory. You catch that? Israeli jets will now be shot down if they attack a Syrian army position. So this has expanded tenfold. For two years, the U.S. mass media has been all but silent about U.S. activities inside Syria. The mass media has not explained to the American public that the existence of U.S. forces inside Syria is not authorized by the Syrian government or by the United Nations. Similarly, <laughs> uh, sorry, the mass media has not informed the American public that the U.S. has repeatedly refused to cooperate with Syrian and Russian military efforts to attack ISIS terrorists, even though the Obama administration claimed that the U.S. purpose for being in Syria was exactly that. The mass media again failed to report that the U.S. attacked the Syrian military two days ago and has failed to report this new situation with Russian rules of engagement in Syria. What this means is simple. The next time the U.S. attacks the Syrian army, the attacking aircraft are going to be shot down. When that happens, the U.S. will scream, we've been attacked by the Russians, and use that to start a war. When war breaks out, the American people will be totally unaware of how or why this happened, and will be blindsided by the hideous reality that we in the U.S. started it. And we in the U.S. are the ones who are in the wrong. Um, this is insane. This is insane. Um, I know also that uh, I did see <clears throat> Superstation 95 down there. But uh, this all doesn't come from that. So... The only thing I think that came from that is this piece down here, which I didn't even read to you. So I just wanted to make you aware of that, um, that there was only one part of that that I didn't even read that came from the wonderful Superstation 95. So that's what we're looking at. Um, wow. You know, we, we were really, really staring down the barrel of something very nasty here. And like I've stated before, anybody that thinks that this time that war will be kept over there and not hit uh, our mainland here, I think is insane. Absolutely insane. Russia's smarter than that. Russia's not going to just contain a war to its own country. You know, they're, they're not that foolish. They're not that foolish and they're not that ill-equipped. So um, take it for what it's worth. And uh, like I always say, get ready. Get ready for it. It's